We talked about the boomerang principle primarily this morning uh, as it relates to first, second, and third. Our primary text was from the book of Matthew where we started verse 37 through 41 when the lawyer asked Jesus, what is the great commandment? And Jesus said, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. We found out even more so that God is to be first in our lives and we serve our fellow brethren and we are third. First, second, and third. But that's not a bad thing to be third because we found out that because of the boomerang principle, what you give out will come back. I had several kids come up to me after the service today and wanted to play with the boomerang. I said, oh, you got to be careful with this. And uh, Shannon shared a story of how when she was a young girl, she had a boomerang. How she would throw it. And one of the things she shared was trying to make a decision whether to catch the boomerang or duck. <laughs> and if you learn to throw this thing right, it's going to come back with some vigor and some force. It's coming back to you. And I believe, as we, should, we all will agree, that Shannon made the right decision to duck, let it hit the ground, and pick it up, and throw it again. And the boomerang principle in scripture is to love God first, love others second. And then we are third. Okay? And being third means we get back what we give out, just like as we throw the boomerang. It leaves, but it comes back, okay? So that was our principle today. And we, we, we mentioned some in, uh, of Matthew chapter 7, as was uh, read in our meditation, about we can serve others at our best when we are right, okay? Uh, does us no good to try to reach out to others and we walking around with planks in our eye trying to help folk who got specs, okay? So, so if we're all out of sorts, even in our best efforts, we're going to destroy our witness to those we're trying to help because they'll say, well, you know, it was nice of them to give me that bag of groceries, but they need to get their act together because they're in there arguing and acting crazy. And, and so we destroy our witness that way. So when we understand the principle of the, the, the splinter, speck, and plank, and log, we're better off relating to one another in the right way so that when we give our efforts to others, they see God in us, okay? So uh, we, we highlighted on that. Tonight, we're going to talk about another woman uh, that demonstrates this boomerang principle to give to others and to see it come back to her okay and I had Marquise read Acts chapter 9 we read about a lady whose Hebrew name is Tabitha and her Greek name is Dorcas we're in Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Are you there? So say amen. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. The Amplified says she was abounding in good deeds and acts of charity. That meant she went looking for something good to do. Okay? 
Now, I do want to say in the introduction of this verse, introducing Dorcas to us, that there was a certain disciple named Tap. That's critical. Because women back in New Testament times were not given distinctions uh, of high character and priority because that was not custom, Mary, to do that for women. Okay? Uh, I'll give you an example. When Jesus fed the 5,000, they said it, the, uh, the scripture says 5,000 men. Well, we didn't count women and children because in, in society at that time, uh, they were not esteemed on the same level as men. Okay? That's just how it was. Okay? Luke makes it clear that this woman deserves the title. Y'all missed that. This woman deserved the title of disciple. You didn't do that to women back then. Okay? The term disciple is critical because there is a difference between a Christian and a disciple. Hello, somebody. Okay? In the book of Matthew, in the Great Commission, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus says, go and, and teach all nations, baptizing them. So you become a Christian by being taught and then baptized. Then the verse says, teaching to observe teaching them to observe all things which I've commanded you. That's how you now become a disciple. Okay? Because now you begin to observe all the things. So there's a second level of teaching. The teaching to get, help you become a Christian, you get baptized, and then there is teaching continuously to disciple you. So when Luke says that she was a disciple, this woman was nothing to play with. Because women didn't get that distinction. And she was so dynamic that Luke, the writer of Acts, says, I'm going to point her out because she needs to be known throughout history. She was a disciple. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? Okay. So, uh, we know who we are dealing with with this kind of Christian now. Okay? Uh, New King James says she was full of good works. The Amplified says she was abounding. Okay? Now remember the principle, loving God and loving others. And in yourself you are last. She went looking to help somebody. You know anybody like that? That that just looking for something to do that's good. What can I do to help somebody? A prayer was like, Lord, I thank you for this day. Now send some people my way that I can do something for. I want to help so badly. Put all the people in my way that you want me to help. And I'm ready to get it done. She was one of those kind of people. The Lord is calling for people like that today. Looking for something to do. And we're going to find out later that she chose, God called her, to serve the widows. Why widows? Because widows are less likely to be able to pay you back when you do something for them. Ooh, y'all let that one slide. Okay. Okay. Usually we want to do things for people who can pay us back. You know, I don't lend you some money. I expect it. Later on. Come on now. 
But when you work with widows, you don't expect that. Come on now. What I look like trying to get something back from Sister Ruth? I got to help Sister Ruth with something. I ain't going to hang you. If you saw me doing her paying me back, y'all look at me like I was crazy. What's this Sister Ruth? What are you doing that for? Okay? I'm not expecting anything back from her. She's a widow. What are you talking about? Whatever is done for her, we do it out of the goodness of our heart. Without expecting her to pay me back. She had to bring me some money. I said, Brother Smith, here it is. I got paid it. You better keep that, Sister Ruth. So, jo so, so, so Dorcas sought after to help the people who needed her the most without looking for anything in return. Amen, somebody. Oh, what a woman. Amen. So that's where we're at. Right now, God wants us to keep Him first, amen. Seek God's kingdom first, and He will supply all these other things. God must affect your decisions that you live by as you live by God's perspective. Jesus said. Uh, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Okay? God needs to be in charge of your life. All right? When, when it's time for you to make decisions about life, it should be motivated by what God thinks about the subject that you're dealing with. Uh, you are the disciple if Jesus is not your boss. He has the right and the power and the reign to rule in your life more and more. Uh, you don't have to guess. You shouldn't have to guess about who a disciple really is. I've said it before, uh, but if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Okay? It shouldn't be no doubt that people know that you are a follower of God. It shouldn't be a doubt at all when they see, oh, that's a woman of God right there. That's a man of God right there. Shouldn't be no question. Okay? So when Dorcas's name came up, it was clear that everybody knew who she was because of the abounding good work she did. Everybody knew about her. Okay, and it was nothing she sought after for the work's sake she did. Amen? All right. Now, she did principle number two phenomenally. No selfishness here. Uh, what an what a outstanding, what an outstanding woman and uh, uh, let's, let's read a little bit of the story, okay? And then make a couple points and get you on home. All right? Verse 37, but it happened in those days that she became sick and died. There is some theology out there that will try to teach you that if you are a faithful Christian of God, you don't get sick. Are you sick because you ain't faithful. So, you don't get much better than Dorcas if she got sick. Hello. Okay. Let nobody put that foolishness on you because there are those who do. Who do. You go right around the corner on 105th Street, there are a couple of institutions that teach that doctrine. 105th uh, over there by where Crystal live at. Whatever street that is. And there's one on 105th and Chester, both of them the same kind of people. All right? She died. When they washed her, they laid her in the upper room. Now, wait a minute. She died. Shaleen, she died. So why did they bury her? Why did they take her up to, to the upper room? She is dead. 
So what do you do with dead people? You prepare them for burial, right? They didn't. Now watch why, okay? And since Lida was near Joppa, and the disciples, there the word again, disciples, not just Christians, disciples. I can't emphasize that enough and y'all not getting it. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. I right, get the visual now. They didn't bury her because somebody said, wait, Peter is right round corner. All right? They had heard enough about God working through Peter. Hello? All right? They knew when Peter was in jail in Acts chapter 4, all right, he walked through the bars and the, and the, and the, uh, the guards and he didn't know he was gone. They heard enough about him when he, when he met the blind man, silver and gold, I have I not, but what I have I give out to you. Okay? They knew about that. They knew the mighty works that God had went through Peter. So when they said, homeboy is round the corner, somebody go get it. Now let me ask you a question. Do you have a Peter in your life that somebody that can connect with God when you can't? The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. Okay? Where do you go, Floyd, when you need some sharpening? Okay? Shannon helping everybody, everybody, everybody. But there comes a time when she needs something too. Where's she gonna go? So it behooves all of us to be in a position to be part of an iron community to help somebody in here. So, do you have a Peter that you can call on to get you through something? So, the disciples now, not just anybody, but disciples went. Two men went and implored him not to delay, but to come to them. Verse 39. Then Peter rose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him, weeping, showing all the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. These women showed up now because the person who had ministered to them so, so many times had died and they came to show their respects and it was, they were hurt by the fact that we had lost our best friend. So they were there crying and weeping about how, how, how hurt they were and they showed Peter, look what she did. What she did for us. I needed a skirt. She made it. I needed a sweater. She took care of me. I, 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 anything I needed, Dorcas took care of it, Peter. So, uh, but Peter put them all out. See, Peter knew, and he didn't want it to occur in this case, that if everybody watching Peter praying to do what he had done before, it would be easy for folk to be like, look what Peter did. But with them out of the room, Tange, and it's just Peter and Dawkins, and Peter on his knees praying, Okay, now you know who's doing the work. Okay. Because human nature would have you think, well, Peter, there's something else, ain't he? That ain't what we're doing here. Because God gets the glory. Okay. Peter makes sure we ain't about to do this one. 
Not like that. So y'all go on and leave. And then me and God, we're going to get this done. Okay? So, he prays for her. And he mentions, calls her names. She opened up her eyes. She saw Peter and sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called all the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. See, that's all God was trying to do was let this be something known of what he did. Be careful, hope folk, that won't put you out the room. Be careful. Because cause folk that won't put you out the room is looking for you to look at, look at me. Okay? All right? So, so you don't want that. Okay? So, so you need to leave. So we can give the credit where it, where, it, where it belongs. Amen? And became known throughout all of Joppa. And many did what? Believed on the Lord. Okay? And all that God ever calls us to do is to do work where folk can believe on him. Not on us. We, we do the works of God. God works through us to get his glory for the salvation of mankind. Okay? And that's what happened here. Okay? Prayer isn't forcing God to do what he hadn't intended to do. Okay? It doesn't force it. But what it does, it releases what God has already decided to do. Okay, right? Let's, let's do this. Let's do this one. If I could borrow your sanctified imagination for a second. In heaven, there will be a storehouse of blessings that you could have gotten that you didn't get because you never asked for them. Okay? You have not because what? You asked not. You could have had it. Don't let it be. Well, you said, well, if I'm in heaven, I don't care, man. I, I, you know, I, as long as I'm in the gate, I'm good. No, no, no. Because, because Jesus says, I've come that you have my have life and have it more abundantly, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to get heaven on earth, okay? Because he's got some stuff for us when we do it in the right way. You don't want to look at the, at the shed over there and Jesus said, you had all that you could have had, but because you didn't ask for it, that's where it's at, okay? The point is, there are things that we can have now that you ought to want to get now. Why not get them now? So, our prayer is designed to release what God has already intended to do. Okay? You have power, and we have power in this building. Okay? The Illuminating Company, whoever, whoever our light people are, don't have to come here to give us power because we already have it. We have to make contact to get it. So I have to switch, turn on the switch, Demetrius, to get the power. Illuminating Company not going to come and flip it for me because that's for me to do. You have all of what God wants for you, but you've got to contact him to get it. It's right in there for you. So prayer releases what God had already decided to do. 
Okay? Those of you in the Godhead class will remember that God in his mind had had Christ already crucified before the foundation of the world. In his name. It was already done. Okay? There are things for us that's already done in the mind of God. He just needs for us to make contact with him to release it. So that's where we're at. What time is it? I want to, I want to tell you one more story. I got, let's, if I do this real quick. So let me tell you about another woman. Let's turn to 1 Samuel. Let's talk about Hannah. Okay? Let's talk about Hannah for a couple minutes. 1 Samuel chapter 1. So here we go. Israel had become a rebellious nation. Okay? And God needed a godly man, a godly prophet, to get them back right. Okay? So he, uh, he, he picks Hannah for what needs to be done here. Hannah was one of the wives of... Uh, uh, I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> okay. And um, one of the wives could have kids, but Hannah couldn't. God had closed Hannah's womb. Look at verse 5. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved, I mean, this is the, this is the, the husband, and what he was trying to do was make up for Tanner, you can't have no, no kids, but I'm going I'm to buy you another car. Okay? I'm going to make sure you got all the other stuff you need. Okay? Uh, although the Lord had closed Hannah's womb. Okay? Santa was depressed. She was depressed. In those days, women wanted to bear a son. Okay? That made, them, that made them feel like they were worthwhile on earth. Okay? All right? So Hannah couldn't bear any children because the Lord had closed the womb. All right? So what we have is Hannah getting to a point where she prays to God. Okay? Uh, and in her grief said, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. Okay? Now, she had been praying all along because she had been going to the temple. She was going to church. She's going to church every Sunday. Okay? All right? And so she wasn't unfaithful. The Lord had just closed the womb. Then she decided to pray. Lord, give me the child, I'll give him back. Give me a son, I'll give him back to you. Okay? See, when you get desperate enough, you'll pray the right prayer. Okay? You know, this was not no lay me down and sleep. I pray the Lord the soul to keep prayer. This was, this is, this is good. You just go get down with the get downs here. Okay? All right? And so, once she committed to that, God said, ah, that's where I want you. I got you where I want you. Because now you're going to release him to me. Okay? So he can be meat for my use. You're going to give him to me. Okay? I believe it was around age four when he started showing up at the temple. Okay? When she did that, chapter 2, verse 21, tells us what happened. Now, Hannah played, played for one child. Had, had Samuel. And then in chapter 2, verse 21, babies started popping up all over the place. She wound up having five kids. All right? God will fix it in your life for you to be ready to be used by him when you make the decision to commit to him. Okay? And, and it got to be a commit. Amen. Got to be a commit. And after that, 
He got, had five other children, three sons and two daughters, while the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Loving God first, serving others second, and look at the boomerang effect that comes to you. She asked for one child and had five. Okay? All right? God, God's got a blessing for us when we do things according to his will. All right? Commit to his ways. All right? It is not in man that walketh to direct his own steps. We, there, there are lots of things we, have, we don't know anything about. And that's why we need God to lead us because when we commit to him, he will what? Direct our path. Amen? And that's where we're at today. What a beautiful example, example of the boomerang effect. With both these women gave up to get back in a way that they didn't even think of. And you know why? Because God can do exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or think. Okay? All right? And, and, and knowing we serve a God like that ought to, ought to energize us to the point of knowing that whatever God's plan is for my life, it is going to be all right. So let us continue to work toward keeping God first, serving our brothers and sisters so that God can then use us for the boomerang effect. Amen? Amen. If you're not a Christian today,